Praise the Lord, beloved. We thank God for, for your life again. Thank you very much for joining us on Midday Springs today. We trust that it's been a blessing and we trust that the grace of God is, 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 is abounding to you today. We are in Ephesians chapter 4. Now I want to believe that you are following the message that the Apostle Paul is sharing in, that, in this particular letter um, with the church primarily in Ephesus and by extension to the body of Christ. Um, in the first three chapters, we have seen what the Apostle Paul is communicating. And in chapter three, he talks about the mystery, the mystery that has now been revealed at the time he was writing the letter. And that talks about God's intent that what he was doing with Israel was the prototype. And so when by revelation, Stephen, during his defense in Acts chapter 7, defense before the Sahindrin, he opened his mouth and he referred to the Israelites in the wilderness as the church in the wilderness. He was speaking something about this mystery, which has now been revealed, that what God was doing them with the Israelites in the wilderness for 40 years is like how he will walk with the church in difficult, dangerous world and how he watched over them. The behavior of Israel is mimicking the behavior of the church. God's dealing with the Israel in the wilderness is mimicking how God intends to deal with the church. And so Israel, like we said, the assignment is on, but the assignee has changed. It has not changed as if they have been abandoned, but there's now an inclusion where the rest of the Gentiles are now part of it. So talking to them about it, and now extending the mystery, what God has done from an individual's life into the life of the corporate church. Now the Apostle Paul begins to talk to them again uh, about their life as a corporate body. And let's go to chapter 4 and let's read the first six verses. Ephesians chapter 4. As a prisoner for the Lord, then I urge you to live a life worthy of the calling you have received. Be completely humble and gentle. Be patient, bearing with one another in love. Make every effort to keep the unity of the spirit through the bond of peace. There is one body and one spirit, just as you were called to one hope when you were called, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, and one God and Father of all, who is over all, and through all and in all. Praise God. Hallelujah. <laughs> you see, so now, at this point, talking to them about what God intends to do in the revelation of the mystery, which has been hidden all along, that through the church, the manifold wisdom of God will be made known. Then in chapter 4, he tells them that, so then... I beseech you to walk worthy of your calling. Your calling is that through you, the manifold wisdom of God will be made known to principalities and powers. That calling, he's not telling them, walk worthy of that calling. With all lowliness and gentleness, with long suffering, bearing with one another in love. This is exactly what he was writing to the church in Philippi. In Philippians chapter 2, he told them, humble yourself one to another because you need to be united. And that unity can only come through humility. So here too, he's talking about them walking in unity. But listen to what he says. With all lowliness and gentleness and long suffering, bearing with one another in love, endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. So he's talking about lowliness. Once again, his theology hasn't changed. Apostle Paul's theology is that it is part of our calling. It is part of what God wants the world to see. That as children of God, we should be united. We should work together. But this unity only comes through humility. So here he mentions the same thing. And he says that one of the reasons why you should be united is that there is one body and there is one spirit. As, just as you were called in one hope of your calling. One hope. We have one hope. And there is one spirit. And there is one body. Why should there be separation? 
Then he says that there is one Lord, there is one faith, there is one baptism. Everything is one. Then he says that there is one God and Father of all, who is above all, and through all, and in you all. There is no basis. If your eyes are opened, and you have understanding into this, and my brother's eyes are open, and he or she also has understanding into this, that there will be no unity. It is only when we are blind to this. It is only when we are myopic to these things. It is only when these things are not made clear to us that we'll be fighting. Okay. Then he begins to tell them something that God has also done to ensure that this revelation of the manifold wisdom of God will happen to the saints. So let's continue from 7 and all the way to 16. But to each one of us, grace has been given as Christ apportioned it. This is why it says, when he ascended on high, he took many captives and gave gifts to his people. What does he ascend mean except that he also descended to the lower earth, earthly regions? He who descended in this very one, who ascended higher than all the heavens, in order to fill the whole universe. So Christ himself gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors, and teachers to equip his people for work of service so that the body of Christ may be built up. Okay, let's pause here a moment. He has said somewhere in chapter 2 in the letter that you are his workmanship. Prepared for good works. You are his workmanship. He expects that we will become the tools through which God, Christ, his manifold wisdom shall be made known. We have also seen that the power that raised Christ Jesus from the dead, which is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all, is at work in the saints. But this work cannot be done well if we don't know or we don't even have the skill to do it. So he said when he ascended, he gave gifts. Now, the gift he gave were human beings. And he said that some were apostles, prophets, evangelists, some pastors and teachers. So that they will equip the saints for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. So, he still continued with the agenda that those who are created, who are the workmanship of God, created so that they will work in good works, can only do these things when they are equipped. And the equipping comes from the people he has called, Paul himself being one of them, as apostles and prophets and evangelists and pastors and teachers. So he is elevating these people to them that these people, when they come to you, they are adding value to your lives that the manifold wisdom of God that must be made known to the, to the principalities will happen to you after they have equipped you and they have prepared you. And when this happens, he continues. So I just want us to go and continue until when will this equipping of the saints and the edifying of the body come to an end? Let's go to verse 13 and continue. Until we all reach unity in the faith. Then unity in the faith has come again. So, you know, he's really worried about the division and the separation and I am this and I am that in the body of Christ. He said, that one, no. He gave the apostles and he gave the prophets. If you receive the apostle and you receive the prophet and you receive the evangelists and the teachers and the pastors who are going around teaching all of you, the purpose why God gave them is that you guys will be equipped until you come to unity of faith. Continue. In the knowledge of the Son of God and become mature, attaining to the whole measure of the fullness of Christ, then we will no longer be infants tossed back and forth by the waves and blown here and there by every wind of teaching and by the cunning and craftiness of people in their deceitful scheming. 
Instead, speaking the truth in love, we will grow to become, in every respect, the matured body of him who is the head, that is Christ. From him, the whole body, joined and held together by every supporting ligament, grows and builds itself up in love as each part does its work. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. So, so you see the Apostle Paul telling us that the purpose of all this that will come to what you call unity of faith. Now let me tell you, when you see the arguments and the quarrels in the body of Christ, I believe this, this is the truth, I don't believe this, this is the truth. And sometimes it's not just even based on traditions. Sometimes it's not even based on different denominations. Sometimes within the same denominations, people are fighting. What that is this? And they're fighting about doctrine. I believe this. I don't accept this. I don't. You know what it means? We have not come to the unity of faith. But it is expected that we will come to the unity of faith where we all believe the same thing. It is sad. But for me to know whether the, the body of Christ is healthy or not is one of the things you can see. When two pastors from the same church preach two opposing doctrines in the same church, it's a sign. Clear evidence. We have not come to the same faith. There is no unity of faith. But not just that. Not just unity of faith. But secondly, he says that we should no longer be children. And it is children. He gave a description of children. He said children are tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine. It is not as though maybe a wind of doctrine will come. Winds of doctrines are always there. First Timothy chapter 4 verse 1 says that the Spirit speaks expressly clear that in the last days, many shall fall away from the faith because they will pay attention to doctrines of demons. The only way the church could save the people was that the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors, and the teachers have equipped them that we have come to unity of faith. We have become mature and not children so that we would not be tossed to and fro with every wind of doctrine. Now that we see people being tossed to and fro with the wind of doctrine, it says they are babies. If they are babies, it means they have not come to maturity in faith. It means that apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers are either not doing their work well or the people who are supposed to be worked on are not permitting themselves to be worked on, or both. But it is evident. And it says that those who are deceiving them, they, they do it by what is called the trickery of men in the cunning craftiness of deceitful plotting. These days, what is happening, brothers? A beloved, listen, no. This is when you go on social media, the devil, what he does is that he will bring somebody up. And the person is bringing up his, his champion. This day, they don't, they don't come forth preaching twisted things. No. From the beginning, they, they start preaching pure, genuine doctrine, and they are very eloquent and they are sharp. Then they get massive following. Then just when they have gained your attention, they start dropping the poison small, small, small. And it takes special eyes. Not the, the one we drink. Oh. Special eyes. To see the error that is being perpetrated. May God have mercy upon us. Then he says that, but we should rather speak the truth in love and grow up in all things in him who is the head, Christ Jesus. And he said, from Christ Jesus, the whole body is joined by that which every joint supplies. All of us. As part of the whole body, I supply something, you supply something, you also supply something. If you look at this body and all the parts there, everybody has a special assignment. But everyone's contribution is what makes the body healthy. And based on that, he tells them that they should not grieve the spirit. He talks about the new man and that, that if you are now new in Christ, you have not learned terrible things in Christ. 
So the things that you did in the world, you can't continue in them. You continue in the Christ life. And he challenged them not to grieve the Holy Spirit. Because if they live their former life, they are grieving the Holy Spirit. May God help us that you and I will not grieve the Holy Ghost, but will continue in the newness of life as new people brought forth and created anew in Christ Jesus. We shall live thereby under the power and the grace of the Holy Ghost. Shall we pray? Thank you, thank Father. You, Beloved, Father, lift up your voice. Okay, bless the name of the Lord. Lord. Thank you for the word you have heard. We give you all the glory. Father, 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 we thank you, Father, for the work you have done. In the name of Jesus, Jesus. Jesus. Beloved, we have, been, we have been called to live a life that is worthy of our calling. And that calling is to make known the manifold riches of Christ Jesus. We are telling Allah he should grant us grace to be humble. The grace to be humble so that we walk not in our own strength but in the strength of Christ. What God has told us to do, we walk showing his manifold riches, letting the world know him. We we'll make Christ known through our deeds, through what we say, through how we walk, how we behave in everything. They will see Christ in us. This morning, we want to pray, the Lord, grant me grace to walk worthy of my calling. Grace to walk worthy of my calling. Grace to walk worthy of my calling. Ah. Lift up your voice ah. ah. and ask ah. the Lord to grant me grace ah. to walk worthy of my calling. Lembra <laughs> <laughs> 
the grace of God to live out of God according to my call. The grace of God to walk well in the grace to be humble in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Beloved, you want to agree with me that to be able to walk in humility, we must all come to the unity of faith. Once we all come to that one understanding, knowing what Christ has done for us, we will make every effort to live in unity. And the spirit will bring that bond of peace within us. We ask the Lord, may you grant us the grace, Lord, to reach the unity of faith. We must come together. There must be no division. There must be unity. The spirit of unity must dwell in us in everything we do as a church, as a family, wherever you find yourself. You ask the Lord, let that grace, uh, that bring the unity of the spirit, let it fall upon us once again. In the name of Jesus. Lift up your Bring us to God and bind us together by your spirit in the name of Jesus. Blessed be your holy name. We are praying and asking the Lord to open our eyes that we will not be tossed to and fro by uh, any wind of doctrine. We are just made aware that they are they abound. And we have been told that in the last days they will abound. We ask that in your work with the Lord, may you open your eyes to see. Every wind of doctrine that want to sweep me off my feet, that want to infiltrate my faith, that want to make me shaking in the Lord. Lord, may you grant me grace that I will see it and I will stand firm. Lift up your voice. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Strengthen your people of God and let grace fall upon us, Lord, in the name of Jesus, that we shall not be shaken and we shall not be swept up our feet in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Beloved, we want to thank God for your life and thank you for joining us today on Middle Springs. We trust that grace will abound to you. May you be strengthened in your faith and we pray that also will come your way again, same time, same space, same channel with Middle Springs. May the Lord bless you and keep you because his face will shine upon you and be gracious unto you in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you.